Hello everyone, Board Game Lawyer here. It's a quiet Sunday evening, so I thought I'd play some Marvel Champions from Fantasy Flight Games. And I also thought I would practice for the current round of the Solo Champions League. So the Solo Champions League is a league that I heard of after I listened to a podcast called The Road to Nowhere. And so they steered me to this uh, Solo Champions League. I found it on Discord. And so the, currently they are in Season 11. So this is a, a league that has been around for a while. And they're playing in Round 3. So this is my first season. So I played Round 1 and 2. I had a lot of fun. And so I thought I'd get ready. Uh, to play in round three. So how does the Solo Champions League work? Well, you play three games based upon parameters that they give you for each round of the league, and then you report those, the results of those three games, and then you see how you did in comparison to other players in the league. It's just for fun league, and that's how I approach it. So uh, I've, I've done fairly decent, I thought, for the first couple of games in the league, but I'm by no means one of the best. So, uh, But I'm just having fun, and I'd like to push the league, and so I'm going to record this to practice a game tonight to get prepared for this round in the league. So how does it work? Well, in this particular round, they set up the parameters. They tell us to play with Rhino and to use as the modular set in the Rhino deck today the Anachronauts. And so I've got the Anachronauts all shuffled here into my encounter deck. They're all ready to play. And so they also give us the option to play uh, a, the difficulty of standard or standard two in this particular round. And so since I'm just playing for fun, a practice round, I decided to use Rhino in standard form. So we have Rhino one and two out here on the table. So he comes into play with 14 hit points. He has a scheme of one, an attack of two. He's a brute criminal. And his main scheme, it tells us what our content should be. We did not include the bomb scare. We put in instead the Anachronauts per the rules of this round. Also, the setup tells us to advance to stage 1B. And so when we flip over to 1B, it is the break-in. It says if this stage is completed, the players lose the game. It starts out at 0. It threats out at 7. So it has a low threat threshold, which could be a problem for the hero that I chose to use today. So also in this league, they give you a choice of, in this particular round anyway, a choice of five different heroes. So you could play with the Hulk, which I have the Hulk here. Uh, you could play with Miss Marvel. You could play with She-Hulk. You could play with Star-Lord. Or you could play with War Machine in this round. You could pick one of those five, and you're locked into the justice aspect for this, for this particular round. So last night, I was tweaking a Hulk justice deck anyway. The rules for the Championship League just uh, popped today. And when I saw that Justice was the aspect that we're to play in and that we could use Hulk, I thought, well, that's great because that's what I was working on last night anyway. And so I've got the Hulk here. We've got uh, Hulk, as I said, he's going to have a difficulty with the break-in, keeping the threat down. So he has a thwart of zero. He has an attack of three. He has a defense of three. And he's enraged, meaning that he has a forced interrupt when your turn ends discard your hand. So you can't keep your hand from round to round. He has a hand size of four, which is low, but he has a hit points of 18, which is a lot. So that's Hulk's advantage is his number of hit points. But of course, he starts in his Bruce Banner form, who is a genius scientist. He does experimental research as an action. He can draw a card, choose and discard one card from your hand. And you can do this a limit of once per round. He has a recovery of four. So there's Bruce Banner. I have aspect cards in my deck today, so I'll go ahead and give those a quick shuffle. And I'll just briefly touch on a couple of other things that you may see on the table here that's different than my previous videos. You'll notice this dial over here off to my left. So this is the dial that I use to track the number of rounds that I play. So whenever you start the game, you start out at round one, and then whenever you, whenever Rhino takes his turn and ends his turn and it becomes Hulk's turn, that's when you advance this dial to the next round. So you keep track of your rounds in the league. And a couple other things that you keep track of is you keep track of how much health you have left on the board, which includes your hero, as well as any allies that you may put out uh, to help out the Hulk or whoever it is that you're using. And you also keep track of how much threat you left on the table. So you want to try to clear as much of that threat up as possible. And you also don't want to leave any of those pesky minions 
laying around because that'll count against you as well in some rounds. So that's just a brief overview of how the league works. It's a lot of fun, and so I encourage it. If anyone would like to join the league, you can um, send me an email, boardgamelawyer at gmail.com, and I can put you into contact with people that can get you set up for the league. So um, but anyway, we'll go ahead and begin this game, this practice round. So we're going to play with the Hulk today. He begins with a hand size of five. So we have Suborbital Leap as our first card that we draw. We also draw the power in all of us. We draw Strength. So we got some resources to use. We have Thunderclap, and we also draw Mockingbird. So I like Mockingbird. That's a good card to have. That'll buy you some time. I'll also keep, I think, behind some some resources here. We'll discard Thunderclap and Suborbital Leap, and then we'll draw uh, two more cards to make up the rest of our hand. So we have one way or another, and we draw the power in all of us. So we have a lot of resources to use with not much to spend it on. But that's okay, because we have that one way or another card, so I guess we'll be flipping over to our hero form today. Bruce Banner's hero form says, Search the encounter deck for a side scheme, reveal that side scheme, and draw three cards. You have to do that in hero form, and you can only do this once per round. But that is one way that you can get uh, some extra card draws in your turn. Before we flip, though, I think we'll use that experimental research action to draw a card. And see if there's something else that I might want to keep outside of these cards right here. So let's go ahead and use our experimental research. So we draw Ironheart. Not bad. Yeah, I think we'll keep a hold of Ironheart. That doesn't hurt us. And we will discard. How about we'll get rid of one of these power of the power in all of us. Unfortunately, we'll have to discard one of those. So there goes some of our economy, but... Uh, We'll make up for it with Ironheart's ability to draw a card. So we'll discard the power in all of us. We'll use the other power in all of us to put out Ironheart. So it costs two. You can use the power in all of us to pay for Ironheart. So that draws us another card. After you play Ironheart from your hand, draw one card. And we draw Hulk Smash. <clears> hmm, <throat> That might be good to have here early on. So we'll flip over to our, our uh, Hulk side. So now we are the Hulk already, and we'll use that one way or another card to search the encounter deck for a side scheme, reveal that side scheme, and draw three cards. So I know which side scheme I'm after here early in the game. It's going to be the one with low threat threshold, one that we can easily remove, which is crowd control. It has a crisis icon, but this is a good time to get it because there's no threat on the break-in. So we'll put crowd control out there on the table. And then with that one way or another card, that allows us to go and draw three more cards after we put it out onto the table. So I'm shuffling my encounter deck here after searching for crowd control. I'll place two threat. Onto crowd control, discard one way or another, and draw three more cards. So we draw clear the area, great card to have. We also draw lockjaw, and we draw unstoppable force. Ready, Hulk, if you paid for this card using a fist resource, draw one card. All right, so now we have six cards that we can use. We have unstoppable force, and we have strength, both of which we can use to pay for that Hulk smash, so we'll set those off to the side here for a moment. We've got Lockjaw that we can use to pay for clear the area. So we'll spin Lockjaw to play clear the area. Remove two threat from a scheme. If this removes the last threat on that scheme, draw one card. So it does remove both threat from crowd control. And we'll draw a card, and it's another one way or another. That's a waste card because we won't be able to use it again this round because it's a max of one per round. So I do think that we will get rid of crowd control. Let's see. 
If we do a Hulk smash, we can do 13 damage to Hulk or to Rhino. So we can use three resources. We can use one way or another. We can use Unstoppable Force and we can use Mockingbird to pay for that Hulk smash. That'll preserve our strength for us, which we may need going into our next round. So yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend these three cards here, Mockingbird, Unstoppable Force, and Hulk smash. Yeah, I don't want to waste my Hulk smash. I want to kind of smash this guy down quick today. I, it's unfortunate to lose Mockingbird. Well, I can't keep anything. I can't leave anything over anyway. So, yep, we're in Hulk form. So our forced interrupt is going to cause us to lose cards. So we're basically going to have to spend all of these cards anyhow. So what if we did the Unstoppable Force... Spending these two resources, we still wouldn't have enough to put out Mockingbird. So yeah, it's kind of an unfortunate um, way that I played this, because I don't get that Mockingbird. But you know what? Mockingbird could preserve us a little bit. So rather than use that Hulk smash... Yeah... That'll buy us some time, possibly. So let's let's put Mockingbird out on the table. It's going to cost us all of these resources to do that because we can't carry anything over to our next round. We'll put, um, we will stun Rhino. Rhino is stunned. So Mockingbird, Ironheart, and Hulk are all three going to attack Rhino. So that'll remove three, four, five damage from him. So that puts him down to nine. Whether that was the right thing to do or not, I'm not sure. But probably should have used the Hulk smash. Yeah, we'll look we'll look and see later how that turns out for us. So we place one consequential damage onto Ironheart and one also onto Mockingbird. And that begins Rhino's turn after we draw our hand size of four. So we draw our ingenuity. That's a good card, I love it. Boundless Rage. We have energy, and we also draw a Hulk smash. So now we have another Hulk smash. Both of our Hulk smashes here right at the beginning of the game. Whether we're going to use them or not, I'm not sure yet. We'll just see how this, this turns out. With uh, Solo League, you want to do a lot of management of the villain board. So you want to not let anything grow too powerful. You don't want too many... Too many threats out there. You don't want too many minions out there. You're going to take things out as you can, if it's possible. So that's not a pro tip necessarily. It's just uh, just an observation after playing the first couple of rounds. And so we place one threat on the break-in. Rhino is not going to attack us today because he's stunned. But he will deal us an encounter card. And the encounter card is the Enhanced Ivory Horn. Attached to Rhino Hero Action, spend three Fist resources to discard this card. It gives Rhino an additional plus one attack whenever he does decide to attack us. So that's the end of Rhino's turn. We'll begin our turn. So that's when we, when we have an advanced this dial. So now we're in round two of Hulk. And with Hulk, I think we will... Spin one resource to put out Boundless Rage, hero form only. Hulk gets plus one attack, force response. After you change form, discard this card. I know it's terrible to play that, so maybe we won't waste our time with it. Yeah. We'll just hang on to those resources for now, because remember when we flip down into our banner form, that's what will allow us to play this uh, Ingenuity card. And he'll also have that ability where he can, uh, so we might get something better. So we won't waste our cards on bound, Boundless Rage. This is really not a great card for Hulk, even though it only costs one. So we'll just uh, remove one threat with Mockingbird, I think. So that removes one threat from the break-in. And it places one damage onto Mockingbird. Uh, Hulk's going to do three damage to Rhino. That'll knock him down to six. 
And Ironheart, we're going to preserve Ironheart for now. Maybe just use her as a blocker later or or whatever. So rather than do that one damage with Ironheart, we'll just leave her intact. Now we'll flip down to our banner form. And it says experimental research, action, draw a card. So let's draw one. we got clear the area. That is a good card to uh, remove threat. It says that re remove two threat from a scheme. If this removes the last threat on that scheme, just draw one card. So we may just hang on to that. Nope, well, I think we'll hang on to Hulk Smash. I think we'll spend Boundless Rage. And we can hang on to Energy. Let's see. We have Clear the Area, Ingenuity, Boundless Rage. Uh, we'll just spend those two resources from Energy. Let's see. Now we'll use Clear the Area. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll use Clear the Area and Boundless Rage to put out Ingenuity. Yeah, that's how we'll do it. And then we'll hang on to that Energy card. And we'll also hang on to our Hulk Smash card, because we've only got, I believe, two in our deck. And I've already wasted one. So we'll hang on to that. Advantage is we can draw our hand size. Back up to five now. So we've got uh, uh, Crushing Blow. We draw clear the area, and we got Suborbital Leap. Three cards to take into our next turn. We'll begin by placing one threat on the Rhino. Rhino is going to scheme for one, plus two is three. So we'll place three, three more threat on the break-in. Then we draw our encounter card, which is Stampede. When revealed, Alter Ego, this card gains Surge. So we're going to Surge on us. And then we'll draw a card, and it says, When revealed, deal one damage to each hero. We are not in hero form. So the Shocker comes out into play without shocking anyone. But he does have three health on him, a scheme of one, an attack of two. So that ends Rhino's turn. So now as we go into our, our, our next turn, this is our third turn in the game. So Bruce Banner's now up to three in the, in the game. And we've got Hulk Smash. We've got Suborbital Leap, Crushing Blow, Clear the Area, and Energy. And we've got that Ingenuity that we can use. So how about we... Use our banner ability to draw a card. So we draw the helicarrier. Can we pay for a helicarrier? That wouldn't be a terrible thing to put the helicarrier out. If we do, we'll have to get rid of a card. So how about we get rid of suborbital leap? Will that allow us to pay for everything that we need? I believe it will. Yeah, we don't have, uh, so if we put Helicarrier out, let me see if, how we can work this. So I need to discard one of these cards. Clear the area is good to have. It allows us to help remove some threat. But that Hulk smash would be overkill on Hulk right now, on, uh, on Rhino. Hmm. Helicarrier is good for the long run. If I put Helicarrier out, I can use Ingenuity and Genius to put Helicarrier out. Crushing Blow. Suborbital Leap. Now we could use Crushing Blow, Suborbital Leap to play... We can remove all of our threat. We could also remove Shocker. And we'll have a couple of chumps. So, just trying to think my way through this one here. So if I use Energy to put out the Helicarrier using Ingenuity. Okay, so Helicarrier is out. Energy is spent. Flip to our Hulk side. Hulk is going to attack Shocker. 
to knock him out. And then we can, let's see, we could use, we could reduce the cost to play the suborbital leap. Or we could knock out Rhino using the Hulk smash. Let me think about this for a second. I don't have anything to do clear the area with. So yeah, I think I'm going to reduce the cost to play Suborbital Leap to knock both of those threat, all, all four of those threat, off of our main scheme. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. And clear the area will just go away. So all the threat is removed off of the break-in. So we'll ready Hulk, and we'll ready Ingenuity. We'll ready the Helicarrier, and we'll begin. We'll draw our hand size of four, so we have Ingenuity. We can only play one of those. We got four Justice. We have Thunderclap, and we have Banner's Laboratory. Okay. Those are our four cards going into our next round. We'll place one threat on the break-in. Rhino is going to attack, and we will uh, we will defend that with Ironheart. So he attacks for two plus one is three. So Ironheart is knocked out. And then we will draw our encounter card which is, I'm tough, when revealed, give Rhino a tough status card. If Rhino already has a tough status card, this card gains Surge. So now Rhino's tough, but that will end his turn. So it begins our turn, so we move our dial up to four. This is our fourth turn in the round. And we have Ingenuity, Four Justice, Thunderclap, and Banner's Laboratory, all cards that we could play. Or I can't play hardly any of them. So for justice would remove threat. For justice would remove threat. Remove three threat from a scheme. Four threat instead if you paid for this card using a mental resource. So is it possible that we could knock that tough card off of Rhino? Can we play Thunderclap, reducing its cost by one? Does it? Reducing its cost by one, so I'll take it down two. So then Ingenuity would also could be used to pay for it, and as well as this Ingenuity. And we wouldn't have enough left over to play for Justice to remove threat after we do the damage to Rhino. I'm just thinking out loud, so what I'm thinking about is that breaking and taking car. We want to get rid of that as soon as possible, and for Justice could take care of that, but... Because that tough card is on Rhino, and I can't generate enough damage and have enough resources to do the Thunderclap, we may just, um, with Mockingbird, knock out the tough card, which will knock out Mockingbird. And then with our Helicarrier, in our, well, we might we might actually get a better card when we flip over to our banner side. I intend to flip to banner, so we will do three damage to Rhino. So he goes down to th nope. We knocked off our tough card, so yeah, he will go down to three. So there goes our tough card. Thunderclap would do three more damage. But then we would have additional encounter cards to deal with on this turn, and we won't be able to put out Banner's Laboratory necessarily. So let's do this. Let's flip over to our, our Bruce Banner side. We'll draw a card and discard a card. So we draw four Justice, and I think we'll discard Thunderclap, or we'll discard Ingenuity because we can't use that Ingenuity. But we can... Spend a couple resources to put out Banner's Laboratory, which gives us a plus three recovery and an alter ego form. It 
allows us to generate an another mental resource. And so I think we'll, we'll get rid of the thunderclap. We'll get rid of one of the four justices. We'll keep the other one in our hand just for, just for later. So we'll ready Bruce Banner. We've got Banner's Laboratory out now. We've got Ingenuity. We've got the Helicarrier, and we get to draw three more cards. So we'll draw, or four more cards. So we draw the Avengers Mansion. We have Unstoppable Force, Skilled Investigator, and Snowbird. So that is our hand going into our next round. We'll place one threat on the break-in. Rhino is going to scheme for one, plus two is three. So now we're up to five threat on the break in. Mm. And then we draw our encounter card, which is a stampede, alter ego. This card gains surge. And it surges into another stampede. This card gains surge. And into the Anachronauts, when defeated, shuffle each temporal card into the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. So out comes another side scheme it has a hazard icon on it and it puts and we put three threat on the anachronauts so that's going to end rhino's turn we'll begin our turn by raising it to to turn five so we have that avengers mansion we could put out that'll allow for some additional card draws or additional card draw in the game so we have Bruce Banner, Ingenuity, Helicarrier, and Blanner's Laboratory, so we can reduce that Avengers Mansion by, by quite a bit. But I think we'll begin by, let me see what the Snowbird does. Snowbird removes three threat if we put two counters on her when we put her on the table. So if we spend one, two, three, four... I won't have enough to put out Snowbird if I put out Avengers Mansion. But I will have enough to play for Justice. So Snowbird may just not make it to the table. But let's let's draw with Bruce Banner our card here. So we draw a one way or another. Now that could come in handy. So I tell you what we'll do is we'll take the Unstoppable Force and we'll discard that. Then we will... Because uh, we don't, we need that resource to put that Avengers Mansion out because we have to use that one in alter ego form. So, hmm. And I don't really necessarily want to put too many of those guys out there, but. Again, we're talking about things getting out of control. Things are starting to get out of control. But if we do three damage to Hulk, to Rhino anyway, we'll we'll see that breaking and taking anyhow. So how about we do that? Yep. So on this turn, we're going to spend... I hate to get rid of the skilled investigator... We'll get rid of four justice. Okay. So we'll discard four justice. Then that will allow us, and that and we'll use when I say get rid of, we're, we're gonna use that as a resource along with Banner's Laboratory. We're gonna reduce the cost by one and ingenuity to put the Avengers Mansion out onto the table. And then the Avengers Mansion will allow us to draw a card. And that draws us into the Moon Girl. Oh my. So that that would have been better to have sooner than later, Moon Girl. You can only play Moon Girl in our alter ego form. I'm going to flip it now. I'm going to flip over to our hero, our hero form with Hulk. We will now use one way or another. Search the encounter deck. For a side scheme, reveal that side scheme and draw three cards. So we'll go reveal. I'm looking for breaking and taking. There it is. It was going to come out anyway when we did that three damage to Rhino. 
So we'll bring breaking and taking out onto the table. And we'll put three threat onto breaking and taking because it says when revealed, place one additional threat here. And that'll give us another hazard. So three threat onto breaking and taking, but that allows us to draw three more cards. So we're going to draw Machine Man and Nick Fury. That's good. And Limitless Strength. Okay, now we're talking. So if we were to, um, and we're getting dangerously close to decking ourselves, which it looks like we already will. We, we will definitely deck ourselves, but we gain an additional resource just now, or three resources by picking up that limitless strength. So we could spend Machine Man, or maybe Moon Girl. Yeah, we'll 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 spend Moon Girl and limitless strength. To put out Nick Fury. Advantage Nick Fury is that we get to draw three more cards. So we'll draw Crushing Blow, Genius, and Immovable Object. Okay. So we have Nick Fury on the table. And I think we'll put out Skilled Investigator. Skilled Investigator is an upgrade. I'll read it. It says, play under any player's control, max one per player. R hero response after a side scheme is defeated, exhaust Skilled Investigator and draw one card. So we'll put Skilled Investigator right over here. It'll cost us four resources to put Snow guard on the table one two three four resources to put snow guard on the table one two three four yep we're gonna put snow guard out using these four resources right here now snow guard snow guard says that after snow guard enters play place up to three shift counters here while the shift counters here are equal to X, she gets one plus three attack and her attacks gain overkill, or two plus three thwart and gains aerial, or three plus five hit points and gains retaliate. So we're going to put two counters onto Snow Guard, meaning that she will remove three threat. So we'll remove three from the Anachronauts side scheme. When defeated, shuffle each temporal card in the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. So let's look and see if there are any temporals over here. I don't see any. So that scheme is defeated. We'll place one consequential damage onto Snowbird and then we'll exhaust that skilled investigator to draw a card. So we draw Limitless Strength. Wow, I threw the wrong cards off, probably. Okay. So with our Crushing Blow, deal damage to an enemy equal to your attack. So with our Crushing Blow, we'll spend our three resources to do three damage to Rhino. One, two, three. Knocks him all the way down to zero. That takes care of stage one of Rhino. Stage two pops out with 15 hit points. And then it says, search the encounter deck and discard pile for the breaking and taking side scheme and reveal it and shuffle the encounter deck. We already have the breaking and taking side scheme on the table, so we don't have to take that action. It was going to happen anyway. And I think then with Hulk, we will remove... Or we'll do two dam three damage to Rhino, which will knock him down to 12. Nick Fury is going to remove two threat from the break-in. And that will do one consequential damage to Nick Fury. So we're ready the Avengers Mansion and Banner's Laboratory. 
Snow Guard is readied. Nick Fury is readied. Hulk stands up. Ingenuity. Oh, by the way, we decked ourselves, so we have to deal ourselves an encounter card right there. We'll put it right here for now. Already skilled investigator. Already the helicarrier. We have to shuffle our deck. So Rhino gets to draw three. He gets to play three encounter cards so far on his turn. But we have a very nice board state. We've got Nick Fury out there who's going to help us out in the battle. We're at full strength right now. We have a snow guard who can remove three threat in one fell swoop. So we'll draw up our hand size of four. We have unstoppable force. We also draw a thunderclap. And we have iron hearts back. And we have energy. Okay. So that's the end of our turn. Rhino begins by placing one threat on the break in. And he's going to attack us. For three, plus one is four, plus this here is zero. So Nick Fury is jumping out in front of that. As we mentioned earlier, that's who we were going to use him for. Jump out in front of that attack. And then, so we have one encounter card. We need to deal ourselves another encounter card. And yet a third encounter card because of the breaking and taking side scheme. So our first one is Inner Demons. Flip to your... Flip your identity, then if you are Bruce Banner, discard two cards from your hand. Discard this obligation. If you're a Hulk, exhaust your hero. Discard this obligation. So if you are Hulk, exhaust your hero and discard this obligation. Now it says change form first. So we flip our identity to Bruce Banner. Discard two cards from your hand and discard this obligation. So two of these cards are getting discarded. So Ironheart, Thunderclap, Unstoppable Force, or Energy. Two of these are disappearing. Let's see which ones we're unfortunate enough to lose. We're going to lose Energy, and we're going to lose Unstoppable Force. So that leaves us with Thunderclap and Ironheart in our hand. I'll lay those over here. Our second encounter card is Death Hunt 9000, Toughness and Villainous. When this minion activates, give it a boost card. So we'll put Death Hunt 9000 out on the table. He's tough. So now we're starting to see some of these Anachronauts hit the table. And he's a villain, and he has six health on him. So, oof, that's tough. And then we have the advance card. Well, that could end the game for us, as would be typical in my game. So he schemes for one, plus two is three. So Rhino is going to scheme for one, two, and three, which brings the break in up to seven. And once again, this guy with that grin has done me in. Mm, that was a tough one. But anyway, we saw how the Hulk deck works. Um, there's a lot of nice card draws that take place, lots of additional uh, energy or, or extra resources that we can use. Um, it's a shame that I drew advance there because I think our next turn could have been a good one. Probably could have gotten very close to finishing off the game, but uh, that's how it goes. That's how it happens sometimes, so thanks for watching. My playthrough video today, this was my practice round for the Solo Champions League. I'll probably make some tweaks to my Hulk deck to see what I can do to try to uh, maybe uh, take care of business with lesser rounds. So it took me five rounds just to get to this stage. Probably in the next round or two, I could have defeated Rhino. But the encounter cards took us out today. So thanks for watching my video. Again, if you want to get in touch with me, it's boardgamelawyer at gmail.com. You can shoot me an email, and if you want to be part of the Solo League, which even though we're partway through a round, you could still join to play, and it is fun. I recommend it. You can uh, shoot me an email, and I will forward that to uh, some players that can get you all set up. So thanks again for watching today. I hope to bring you another video again very soon, 
and have a wonderful week, friends. So take care.